Hi, my name is Steve Hallfish. I'm the author of The Art and Technique of Digital Color Correction and co-author of Color Correction for Video. This video is about using a waveform monitor to ensure compliance with specific broadcaster or client standards. We're going to discuss three things. The increasing importance of gamut, how to use secondaries to maintain the look you want while still being legal, and how to measure space with a waveform monitor. Let's start with gamut. What is it? Why does it matter? And how do you measure it? Video gamut is defined by the voltage of the overall signal and the specific color channels inside the signal. The values have maximum and minimum limits. To remain inside of RGB gamut, all of the individual channels of red, green, and blue must be between 0 and 700 millivolts. If you do that, you've got legal gamut. But video is often copied, recorded, or transmitted in a different color space. Most broadcast television uses color difference space instead of RGB. So in addition to being legal, it also has to be valid, which means that the colors are legal when they're moved to a different color space. You may think that a legalizer will keep you safe, but you have no control of how the signal is altered by the legalizer, so colors that you may have carefully tweaked may be altered in fairly radical ways. If you want control over your image, you have to creatively alter the image so that it's legal and looks the way you want it to look. Tektronix is really a leader in analyzing gamut. They've patented displays that visualize gamut, including the diamond, spearhead, and lightning displays. We'll be looking at these specific displays on their low-cost WFM 5200, which can be used in a post suite or even in the field. With the diamond display, the trace just has to stay inside the two diamonds. It lets you know how much of your signal is outside of gamut. There are also warnings on screen in the status displays, like the video session display and the alarm status display that let you know when you're violating gamut. But these alarms don't give you any subjective information about what or how drastic the violation is. The alarms and status displays include letters that describe where the violation is occurring. The letters R, G, and B refer to the color channels. Y refers to luma and C refers to chroma. If the warning uses a capital letter, then the error is over the maximum level. If a lowercase letter appears, then the error is under the minimum allowed. Dashes mean that there is no error. Based on broadcaster specifications, the limits on these displays and for these alarms can be customized in the config gamut threshold menu. The spearhead display also displays gamut. Anything inside of the triangular spearhead is within gamut. For composite video signals, the arrowhead display allows you to see illegal levels without having to convert the signal to composite first. Another useful Tektronix display involves the picture monitor. Check this out on the WFM 5200. Using the config button in the display settings, what appears are a series of bright up choices. These are like the zebra stripes you may have seen on some cameras. The bright up displays show you where in the picture the violations are happening making it easier to fix them with creative color correction solutions. That leads us to using secondaries to solve gamut issues. Instead of simply lowering overall saturation until the violation disappears, use a secondary color correction to isolate or qualify that specific color and just bring that single color into compliance, leaving the rest of the image vibrant and interesting. It's easy to see these colors come back into compliance as you adjust your secondary color correction. Finally, how do you measure space or location with a waveform monitor? In the broadcast specification sheets for networks, they sometimes mention that you can't violate a specific area of the screen. Usually this involves the placement of the network's bug or the little network ID that usually sits in the lower right corner of the screen. Let's take a look at this example from the Discovery Channel. No text shall fall into the space between 21 microseconds and 24.5 microseconds between lines 459 and 541 field 1 in a 1080i 5994 signal. Phew! The first thing we need to find out is where lines 459 and 541 are vertically on the monitor. Use the line select button on the face of the WFM 5200 and use the general dial at the top right while looking at the numeric display. Here's where line 459 is, and here's line 541. Use something like a wipe to translate the location from the waveform monitor to the edit system. For the horizontal placement of the bug, looking at a waveform monitor, hold down the cursor button to call up the menu. 
Under Cursor Style, select Time. That will become a cursor that runs vertically. Choosing Voltage gets you a horizontal cursor. You can move the cursor with the general dial in the top right corner and dial in to the prescribed number of milliseconds. Again, manipulate something in your video feed, like a Live Wipe in Avid or Final Cut Pro, and you can find the area for the bug. You can also use this technique for determining how many lines tall any disclaimer type is in TV commercials. There is often a minimum height for legal copy. For example, nine lines tall. Type a few lines at various heights in Photoshop or your edit system's titling tool with white type on a black background. Then use line select to measure the height of each line. The thumbnail shows you what line of text you're checking. When you see the squiggly lines of the trace, you're on the text. When it's flat, you're looking at black. Look at the line select numerical display at the bottom and count the number of lines where you see some trace movement. This line of text goes from line 435 to 426. So that means the 25 point line of text is nine lines high or the difference between 435 and 426. Well, that's the end of the video for broadcast standards. Look for other Tektronix webinars, like the more in-depth one about Gamut, on the Tektronix website. And be sure to check out the online demo of the Tektronix WFM 5200 and the rest of the color correction for video clips on the Tektronix website.